Good afternoon. Uh, welcome. And uh, I'm really excited to be able to be here today. And uh, it's a good opportunity to be in Singapore. And thank you for uh, the opportunity for attending. Uh, a little bit about myself. Um, I've been with VMware for about eight and a half years. And uh, we are going to talk about the public cloud today uh, and where uh, we believe uh, you as an organization can, um, in your organizations, have the ability to uh, maximize efficiency in your public cloud usage from a consumption perspective, from a cost modeling, uh, even into security and uh, governance uh, as well. And so a little bit about, uh, we'll get into that in just a second, but I do want to start, um, there's a quick agenda, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about VMware Cloud on AWS, which is VMware's joint partnership with Amazon. Um, maybe you attended the session this morning with uh, Kit uh, from VMware who discussed this. And uh, really the key is it's, it's bringing the best of AWS and the best of VMware together um, and ensuring that you have um, uh, really an opportunity to leverage uh, both organizations uh, from a computing perspective. Uh, and the good news is there's a couple of advantages. Obviously it's as a service, um, it's consistent, it's portable, uh, and really it's for any app. Uh, the other thing we'll mention just from an architecture perspective um, is here is uh, kind of the overall view. We're utilizing AWS services, AWS data centers. Uh, and the key is, and really what I wanted to emphasize, is it is now available in Singapore. Uh, and if you look on the uh, slide, it actually articulates some of the other regions um, where we're available. Uh, we will be in Seoul as well as Osaka from a locality perspective, and then, uh, and then Mumbai, and then obviously uh, additional uh, locations um, from within AWS in the next few months. Now let's get to uh, the real topic. So about six months ago, uh, VMware made an acquisition. Uh, that acquisition was of a company called Cloud Health, and so we uh, really excited, we call it Cloud Health by VMware. And Cloud Health by VMware is really bringing together um, what I think is the, 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 the long-standing history and tradition of VMware uh, from an on-premises software-defined data center perspective uh, and really the best of uh, the public cloud and software as a service um, that the Cloud Health team delivered. And so we made this announcement at VMworld last year and uh, one of the things that we wanted to bring to your attention um, is why, and, and I was at VMware prior to the acquisition, but why VMware is in investing in uh, a company like Cloud Health but I think more importantly, investing in you, um, AWS customers, uh, consumers of the public cloud, services. Um, and with that in mind, this kind of gives you a quick idea of how important cloud health is to VMware uh, and, and some of the things that cloud health was able to accomplish uh, over the past uh, six or seven years of existence. Um, and I think the most key piece here um, is uh, right after the acquisition was announced in October of last year, cloud health had about 3,500 customers and uh, as of today, there are over 4,500 customers that are utilizing Cloud Health to manage their spend uh, from, from an AWS perspective. Uh, and we're really excited about that. And we have a significant uh, set of partners, about, a, about 150 to date, and we continue to grow, uh, really to partner with you uh, along this journey into the public cloud. I want to be clear from a VMware perspective, this is a, a quote from our CEO, Pat Gelsinger, um, and he said, we will, make v, uh, we will make Cloud Health the cloud operations platform for VMware. It, it's, it's, it's the choice of the industry. And VMware, obviously we have a legacy, we have a tradition in, this, uh, in, the, in the private cloud space, the VMware space, but more importantly, we're focusing on the public cloud. And I'm really excited about that. Um, uh, you know, a couple of uh, quick, uh, in, some information related to where Cloud Health is. Um, when we made the acquisition, Cloud Health was already based all over the globe, all over the, uh, all over the world. There's obviously a team local here in Singapore and in uh, Australia and others, uh, other regions here in, uh, uh, in, in, within, this, uh, within this region. Um, I, I, you know, one of the things that, I, I, and I think I come from a unique perspective as I was not a part of Cloud Health, but actually on the team that uh, when we made the acquisition, one of the things that drew us to Cloud Health was the breadth and depth of customers. Um, customers like yourselves who are on this cloud journey, who are looking at, um, maybe it's moving on from cost and analysis into governance, into security, into ensuring that your public cloud workloads are secure. One of the things that I, I think is extremely important here is, we made the acquisition of the leader in the market, managing over eight billion in assets uh, of Amazon spend today. And that's extremely important. Um, but here's the fun part, not only do they manage those assets, 
but it's really about this, the cost savings to you as the consumer. And as you can tell there, 25% uh, plus is the average uh, spend and cost savings that we offer our customers when we get into, uh, uh, into managing those uh, assets. And you can tell here just, over, uh, just under two billion in assets are managed uh, from you know, whether that's an EC2 instance, a, uh, an RDS database, uh, all the way to Redshift and so many other things. The, the, the fun part about cloud health, and really one of the things that uh, was very intriguing to me is, uh, as we begin this conversation and begin the, this opportunity, is the organizations and the line of businesses uh, or, the, uh, or the separate business units within companies like yourselves that are consumers of the public cloud, whether it's a financial organization, uh, whether it's a, uh, an enterprise architecture team, R&D. Um, I'm a developer advocate. Um, and a lot of people think it's kind of interesting that a developer advocate would get up here and talk about cost uh, utilization. We actually see a trend where organizations are starting to move cost analysis or what, we, what, what you might call fin ops or financial ops actually into the pipeline and making more intelligent decisions for workload placement and really helping organizations streamline that process. And so we'll get into some of the, the, the key pieces with that. Um, we did some research based upon the customers that uh, VMware, uh, that Cloud Health and, and VMware have been working with in this public cloud space over the past few years. And one of the interesting notes is um, there really is no one particular organization as a consumer of Cloud Health or is that, is, that is concerned with actually uh, set cost savings in the public cloud. Uh, within VMware, I'll speak specifically us as an organization, um, we used Cloud Health prior to the acquisition, and we were able to save, uh, you know, depending on the, uh, the business unit, depending on the organization, depending on the use case, we were able to save significant amounts of money, uh, whether it's through optimization and right sizing, or the purchasing of uh, reserve instances or con convertible reserve instances, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well uh, from an automation perspective. Um, the other key uh, piece that we can uh, look at is 85, and this is VMware, and I think everybody would uh, agree VMware has been the data center company, um, kind of the forefront of the, uh, of the hypervisor. But our customers um, have told us, and this is over 85% of them, are utilizing the, uh, utilizing the cloud and utilizing the, 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 and the consumption of the public cloud. And so when we started to look at this as, a, as an organization is, how can we uh, work with you? Uh, one of the things that we see is collaboration between different lines of business. Uh, even within our own organization, we were able to save uh, uh, you know, specific funds by taking reserve instances from one organization and reserve instances from another organization, working together and uh, you know, ensuring that those workloads made sense and we were able to go in and purchase reserve instances. Um, and so there's really opportunity within your organization uh, across those lines of business, whether it's traditional IT and infrastructure, or it's a, a security team, or even into maybe a, a, a specific marketing group that may be doing their own um, compute and infrastructure within Amazon. It's really about the line of business and how you're consuming it. The second area is business objectives are the key. Um, it's really about, incre uh, you know, when, when we look at consumption, we look at the proliferation of s different services. Um, and, and Amazon continues to announce service after service. And uh, the reality is we want to ensure that you truly understand how much you're consuming, uh, how much you're spending on each of those services. Is there opportunity to, to bring together uh, specific workloads and resources? And re it's really about collaboration. And so one of the things that you're going to be seeing from us uh, over the next uh, really uh, few years as we build out this uh, goal and strategy is really about collaboration. And, I don't, and not just cost information, but also security and governance. And the last thing I, I think is interesting about this slide, and I'm actually going to read it. Normally I don't read slides, but I want to read this line. The result is that infrastructure grows unchecked with little to no visibility. Um, that is something that we're seeing across the board. And uh, whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing, uh, it really depends on the organizational type, uh, what, what type of strategy you may have. Um, we're looking at this from an efficiency perspective. How can I have an application owner spin up an application, uh, you know, utilizing services within Amazon, ensuring that they meet uh, specific financial constructs, 
as well as security constructs, and then ultimately in, into potential governance or remediation models. And in doing that from within a, uh, a CI CD pipeline, it's one of those things that uh, we're starting to see more and more from organizations. Now, this next slide, I think, gets into it a little bit further. It's really about maturity and where you are on this journey. Uh, within VMware, we're actually at, at varying degrees of this depending on the organization, depending on the line, uh, line of business. Uh, my team specifically, uh, we're consumers, we've been consumers of the public cloud, and we've reached the maturity model where we're way past cost analysis. We're actually far into security. Uh, one of my coworkers, he is not allowed to spin up specific resources within Amazon. Uh, you know, out of, uh, really it's just trying to be fun. But the key is we want to give these options. It's really about the maturity curve. So the first thing we're going to really, I'm going to focus today on cost and visibility. Um, but before I jump ahead, I do want to talk a little bit about the security and compliance piece. If you, were, uh, if you attended the last session, uh, obviously focusing on um, financial services and compliance and data, and really our goal and objective is to help you understand the overall security posture of your workloads within Amazon. So we're going to look at configuration items. We're going to report on uh, compliance from an AWS best practice perspective, or even into uh, CIS benchmarks, um, and we'll continue to add that functionality. How about compliance based upon a team, or an organization, uh, or even an application? Uh, it that's one of the things that we've done on our own team, is we, we almost uh, grade each other based upon what we've put, uh, what we've provisioned, what we're utilizing, does it meet security uh, parameters and specifics. And the last area, and this is really important, especially if you get into a CI, CD and a, into the development pipeline, is actually the remediation and to automate the remediation of uh, potential vulnerabilities. Um, I might have, at one point in time, put my Amazon shared key and I am, not my IAM credentials, but my shared key and password inside of a file on GitHub. I did do that. Uh, that was not by design, that was by mistake. And we were able to catch that and remediate that before things got out of hand. And that's a common practice. Uh, we're seeing that more and more from organizations. So we'll talk about, uh, we won't talk about that specifically. I'm, like, I will, I'm making myself available after the session in our booth. You can come by, we can, we can dig a little bit further into that. The other area that we find is important and organizations are looking for information is governance. Um, governance basically says, here are the guardrails where you can utilize certain features for certain services and functions uh, within, within Amazon based upon policy. Uh, maybe one organization uh, for, for financial reasons can only provision workloads to a particular uh, a geolocation one uh, particular availability zone. And so we'll be able to set those parameters and those policies and actually report on those and truly provide the granular level of visibility for every uh, one of our organizations. And then lastly, it's really about continuous governance. Things change. Uh, we do make modifications to our workloads. Uh, we do absolutely make human errors like I have. Um, probably like we all have, but the key is we want to use this governance within uh, Cloud Health to ensure that best practices are met, and honestly, regulatory um, uh, practices are, are something of focus, not from the day of provision, but throughout the life cycle of that asset. Uh, and then the last piece, and I think you'll see more and more of this from VMware and Cloud Health as we move forward with this relationship, but we firmly believe uh, that having a data and collaboration layer to bring together, uh, whether it's monitoring data from an application, APM-centric, or security information uh, uh, from, from, a, from a regulatory body or best practices from Amazon, all the way into business intelligence, KPIs. We believe all of that information can work together to provide uh, really an end-to-end -end or a holistic solution. Um, it's really a combination uh, of, of, of DevOps, of DevSecOps, even into FinOps. And so that's one of the things that we firmly believe in and will continue to grow. For the rest of um, the, the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to cover co uh, the, the cost and visibility pieces of Cloud Health. Now, I'm not going to do a demonstration today. Honestly, that's the easiest way to do this. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll speak from a philosophical perspective. You can come by the, uh, the booth and we'll give you a demo. Um, uh, the, the key is, 
is truly understanding what you're doing in the public cloud. I use this as, I mentioned this as a maturity model. Many organizations are at this phase today. Uh, we've done some research, uh, depending on the region, depending on the, uh, the, the location uh, of where customers are. We see this a little bit more in most cases. Um, but here's kind of a quick idea. How can we do this in a best practice model? What are some of the right things? What are some of the things we have done as a customer? Uh, and what we've seen from our customers, right? The first thing is they need to gain visibility of their cloud spend. How much am I spending? Um, my team, we had to, uh, just last week, um, we, we always look at our Amazon spend, we always look at our bills and utilization, and we basically say, are we consuming you know, more than necessary? Can we, can we get rid of potential assets, uh, right? The goal is to, to, to have understanding, especially if you have a big organization like ours um, across VMware, we have over 100 accounts. Uh, it's truly understanding that visibility. The second thing we want to help with is purchasing of reservations. Uh, and this is one of the, I believe, is a, is a key feature and function uh, of, uh, of AWS. And if we look at it, it's really about cost optimization. Can I uh, optimize accordingly? What about modify or exchanging your reservations? All the way down into convertible reservations. Uh, or, uh, you know, those are the things that we're starting to see more and more. We're a consumer uh, of each of those particular workloads, um, and we, we firmly uh, want to put in your hands uh, an easy-to-use methodology and e easy-to-use solution to make sure you have that. How about terminating unused assets? Uh, we call these zombie instances. Uh, these are fun ones. Uh, th it really is about knowing you know, maybe I had an EIP that was provisioned, I, I deleted the workload, but the EIP wasn't deleted with it. And so we absolutely look for zombie resources within our environment. Uh, Right-sizing, underutilized resources. Uh, we'll look at, you know, do I need to change this instance type? We actually do it between generations of instance types, which is extremely important. And then last but not least, really automating that cost control and the delegation of that to individual teams. At the end of the day, I know what my budget is, and there might be a peer of mine that understands his budget. He doesn't need to see what I'm doing, and I don't need to see what he is doing, but absolutely as an organization, uh, we need to see what it looks like. But we give what we call perspectives or granular level visibility into those teams, whether it's an application owner, a line of business, and it's really about delegation. So let's um, jump into container management. Um, container management, extremely important. Um, my team, we've built an open source application focused on, uh, right, today I believe it's nine services, uh, and uh, it's open source, and it's really about helping customers truly understand the value of, uh, of, uh, of those microservices, and ours is deployed on Kubernetes uh, with, uh, with Docker, uh, and we've made it you know, very consumable, very easy to use, but we, we started to look at, and what Cloud Health provides this uh, value for us, is truly looking at all of my containers, truly looking at those workloads. So obviously we support Kubernetes, we support Mesos. Um, depending on the type of consumption uh, from, from a container perspective within Amazon, whether it's, uh, whether it's EKS or ECS, uh, and then obviously we can get into Fargate and all the other pieces. But it's really understanding what your con uh, container architecture looks like how you're consuming them. We're going to give you usage and visibility, same as if it was an, as an EC2 instance. Obviously, showing organizations, different teams, how they're using containers. Um, and then last but not least, uh, you know, giving an application view. Uh, what is my usage? What is my uh, you know, overall performance uh, for each of those uh, container-based applications? The key is we, we live in a, in a, in a world in, within IT. We have traditional applications or monolith, and then obviously we have a lot of the cloud native applications. And so uh, at, at Cloud Health, we're very focused on expanding our portfolio and expanding the capabilities for you to truly understand what, you, what is going on in your environment. Now the, the, the next um, piece, and I'll sit here for a minute, is about identifying right size opportunities. And hopefully you can see it pretty clear on the screen is in this case, we give you a few examples that we want, you know, based upon utilization of data, and we're gathering this from, uh, from native Amazon CloudWatch uh, um, in, in, in the, in the, it, within, the, within the AWS ecosystem. But if you're utilizing some other APM solutions, whether it's Wavefront or Datadog or New Relic, some of the uh, other exhibitors here at the hall today, 
we're going to give you additional context. But at the end of it, really we want you to help you understand that in this case, we're going to recommend that you downgrade this first instance to a, uh, to a T3 large. And how are we basing that? Upon the utilization within that workload and within that resource. Um, and the fun part is we have, we have some actions you can send out uh, a notification, whether it's a, uh, a, a JIRA ticket, a Slack notification, an email. You can even ask for approvals uh, within the organization and send different uh, notifications to particular users. Maybe you want to send an email to the application owner saying, hey, we're going to make these changes over the weekend. That's absolutely something that we see our customers doing. So we're going from an M5 large to a T3 large in this particular example. The other thing I'll mention, we show you the recommended savings, the actual savings that you're going to see from this uh, particular workload. And this is important. These are one of the things that our customers are asking for is this quick visibility and granularity at that. Right? This is an EC2 instance, but we could also do this with EBS volumes, and we'll continue to work with, uh, with, our, with our customers to see if there's any other opportunities as we build this out, or continue to build it, build it out. And the last piece is obviously terminating particular workloads that are either idle, uh, maybe you want to turn them off over the weekend. Uh, we can do this based upon tagging. We can obviously make those automated uh, and spin them down and then spin them up accordingly. I mentioned this a little bit already, but this gives you kind of a graph graphical representation, is the purchase and management of reserve instances. Obviously, modeling reservations, consumption, what the purchase would, uh, what the purchase would be, and understanding the ROI, the payback period. Um, this is something we at VMware heavily use. Uh, and then looking at the, the, the automation of this, modifying those reservations on a consistent basis, and even the automation of that as well. Uh, and then the, the last piece here, and obviously you can see on the screen, this gives us an example um, that uh, we're, 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 res we're recommending a reserve um, to associate 4.5% uh, you know, of our uh, inventory and our lifetime savings, if we were to make this particular switch, is about $1,100. So this is just another example of the graphical pieces that really are about reporting and truly helping you understand how to operate more efficiently from a cost perspective in the public cloud. Now this next one is uh, policies. This really gets into kind of what I would say is the more important piece. It's one thing to have a, uh, have a report to have a graphical representation, but why not the automation? Or why not put policies in place uh, to make changes or to have notifications, right? So the, the key with the policies in this, in this particular use case is we're looking to identify immediate cost savings, immediate cost savings, and then ultimately take that corrective action. That could be spinning down of a workload, maybe deleting an unused resource, uh, or notifying a, an application or an asset owner based upon a tag found within AWS that says, we're going to make a modification. And do this in an automated fashion to where there's not somebody having to sit in the console each and every day. How about getting alerts based upon uh, projections or, the, uh, uh, or when you're about to exceed your available budget? We do allow you to, within, uh, within the platform, to note how much you're spending, how much your budget is. My team, we've done this. And uh, we had to go spin down some workloads last week on purpose. Uh, we do this on a pretty consistent basis. The last thing is creating customized policies for each organization. We firmly believe that organizations have different policies that are meant for your organization. Now, this is focused mostly on cost. Uh, but I'll take just a moment and cover, we actually apply these same policies to security. Maybe uh, finding an RDS instance that's unencrypted or a uh, you know, a particular data lake in my uh, environment that uh, maybe we need to make some modifications to. So we have out-of-the-box actions for these policies, but we also allow you to run a Lambda function on these policies. Uh, one of my peers has a blog out specifically focused on this, where we've identified some uh, RDS um, optimization from a security perspective, and then we utilize Lambda to make those changes. And so we add, uh, allow for additional actions, conditions, and we can actually give you a series of actions. And so this is just another value add or another benefit uh, from an efficiency perspective beyond cost, really getting into security and then ultimately into governance. Now the last piece um, is really about our customers. Um, this just gives you a quick example. Infrastructure, they save more than two million on their cloud spend. Ziff Davis, 
Uh, they receive uh, more than one day per week of employee time. Why? Because of the automation, because of the changes and the recommendations, uh, as well as reserve instance uh, exchanges, et cetera. Uh, change healthcare. I love this one. I'm a security guy. Uh, they stayed ahead more than 100 secure. Uh, they, they basically solved, um, you know, hundreds of security risks and vulnerabilities. And then obviously Cox Automotive, driving and accountability across 40 business units. The complexity, uh, the number of accounts that they were having to manage. We were able to bring all of that data in, uh, uh, take the information, consume it, and obviously make recommendations accordingly. So I've given you kind of a high level of, of, of each of the key pieces within cloud health, and I'll end with this slide. How can cloud health uh, help you? First of all, knowledge. Um, when we look at this idea of visibility, we have so many things going on. We're trying to build applications. We're trying to, to get things to market. We don't really care. Maybe we don't care. Uh, we just want to get it going. But cloud health gives you the visibility of what you're spending, how you're consuming. Am I utilizing a workload? Right? Is it idle, is it not? Um, those are extreme, uh, extremely important questions that many organizations are asking. Um, we are about policy management, making sure that certain users can do things while others cannot. We do allow for granular visibility into application owners, into teams, into line of businesses. And the key is this is not only a, 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 a solution focused on IT, but we actually have a lot of business owners, a lot of financial organizations, or, or, or uh, f uh, financial teams looking at cloud health. Uh, it's, it's amazing how many different users we've seen within the platform. Uh, and then I'll say this, it's really about our, our, our customers and our partners. We have a partner ecosystem that's been wonderful, working with our customers day in and day out, helping you truly understand each of these key pieces within your environment, making sure that as you move into the public cloud, as you're migrating workloads, as you're consuming, that you're staying on track from a cost perspective, and then obviously into security and governance, and, and, and it's so much more. And uh, I'll say this, obviously this is a very short time, a very short period uh, for me to be up here and give you a quick conversation and a, and, a, and a breakdown. Give us an opportunity, come by our booth, we'd love to show you a demonstration and how quick and how valuable it is. Um, it's very simple to use, very easy to consume, uh, and really the goal is for you to truly understand what you're looking at, all of your AWS assets, all of the data, and then uh, from there, make the uh, actionable changes, whether it's cost savings, whether it's security and governance pieces, and so much more. So I'll make myself available, um, uh, as well as our team. We have some t-shirts that we're going to be giving away uh, inside the uh, Cloud Health booth, uh, as well as I, I will be there to, to answer questions on security, on governance, and then the team will obviously be, be able to answer questions on cost as well. So I appreciate your time today, and want to thank you very much for your attention.